Hello, aspiring shuttle pilot. I am Lieutenant Engineer Tetra and I will cover some shuttle piloting basics. The TSN shuttles are an important means to transport cargo and personnel, and it is important that their pilots can handle them efficiently. From the fighter screen, you'll have the option to launch the shuttle. Once you do that, you will see a first-person view from your shuttle. To control the shuttle, you use your WASD keys. A and D will steer you left and right. W and S will tilt you up and down. You can also roll your shuttle using the Q and the E keys. If you have a gamepad or joystick, you will likely find it much easier to control the shuttle using one of those. You may need to reconfigure your controls first. You can ask any TSN officer for help with that. If you want to go a little faster, you can boost your shuttle using the insert key. To slow down, you hold the delete key. This will slow you until you eventually come to a full stop. The shuttle has limited situational awareness, but there are a few tools here that can help you orient yourself. The first is the bearing indicator at the top of your screen. It shows you your current bearing in degrees as a number between 0 and 360. If you ever get lost, you should ask your science officer or captain what bearing you should head to. On the left hand side, you will see an indicator that shows your vertical offset relative to the plane of ecliptic. The shuttle can fly above or below the plane indefinitely. This indicator tells you where you are. If you see negative numbers, it means you are below the plane, and if you see positive numbers, you are above. You should generally try to stay on the plane, so near zero, since that is where all the interesting things are. Another important indicator for orientation are these white lines on the bottom of your screen. They designate a big square that is lying flat on the plane. You can use this to help judge how your shuttle is oriented. I would recommend you try to point your shuttle the right way up, since this makes it much easier to navigate. On the top right of your screen, you will see a green bar. It shows the current shield status of your shuttle. Your shuttle has some protection against enemy fire. However, you should always strive to avoid enemy attacks. The TSN shuttle is not combat capable. Its beams are extremely weak and only intended as a defensive measure against enemy drones. As the shuttle pilot, your job is to avoid enemies and keep the shuttle safe. You will see other ships designated on your HUD with colored indicators. Ships that aren't in your field of view get a green or red arrow pointing towards them. Green arrows denote friendly ships, while red ones denote enemies, so you should avoid those. The ship you've launched from is designated as home. The arrow pointing towards home is a slightly brighter shade of green than the other friendly arrows. Once your shuttle mission is concluded, you should fly towards the home designation. And then once you get close, you press the R key to request docking. A successful dock brings you back to the fighter base screen, where you'll now see that the shuttle needs to be refit for a short time before it can be launched again. The TSN shuttle is capable of delivering cargo, equipment or personnel to designated drop-off points, or to pick them up from designated pickup points. All of these points are collectively referred to as rendezvous points. When the science officer identifies a rendezvous point, they will relate the location and type to the crew. The communications officer then has to prepare the shuttle by loading the required cargo, or making sure the shuttle is empty in case of a pickup. Finally, the captain will command the shuttle pilot to launch. You should never launch unless you are sure the correct cargo is loaded. Oftentimes, the helms officer will orient the ship such that the rendezvous point will be directly ahead of you when you do launch. These shuttle operations are the easiest. However, that's not always possible, and in other cases your captain or science officer will tell you which bearing to head for. The rendezvous points can still sometimes be difficult to find, especially if they are far away or if they are located inside a nebula. For that reason, it is highly recommended that shuttle pilots keep a captain's map or a science console open, in addition to the fighter console. Having a map is a great aid for orientation, surprisingly enough. 
If you are not able to open a map in addition to your fighter console, you should let your crew know. That way they can give you more detailed directions. All drop-off points, as well as the pick-up points for personnel, are designated with a green mesh sphere. Once you have found it, you simply fly through it to pick it up. Note that you should do this slowly. You shouldn't boost through a pickup. Doing so may risk uh, the pickup not succeeding. This particular point is a pickup for an engineering team. I have made sure that the shuttle is empty, that way I can successfully pick it up by flying through. I then get a notification telling me that the engineers have successfully boarded the shuttle. Coming up next is a cargo pickup. The cargo unit is one of the most difficult to spot for its small size. To pick it up, you simply fly through it, same as before. However, right now this will fail because my shuttle is already full of engineers. The next pickup is a life pod. Life pods are an emergency measure to rescue the crew of destroyed ships, so they should be picked up with priority. They are fortunately a lot easier to spot than the cargo pods. The next pickup is the easiest to spot. This is a TSN sensor buoy, a piece of equipment that can be deployed via shuttle. There are two such pieces of equipment, the sensor buoy and the comms relay. They both look very similar. They are large enough that they get a designation on your HUD, which makes them even easier to find. The next pickup is a black box, the most difficult pickup to spot. This is a piece of equipment that can sometimes be found around shipwrecks. It contains valuable data that you need to download to your shuttle's internal storage. To do this, you have to fly close to the black box and wait for the pop-up that says you're downloading data. You now have to wait near the black box until it disappears. That will be the indication that the download has concluded. If you're wondering, over there is a mine. As you probably know, mines detonate when any craft gets within their proximity. So if you see anything like this, you know to go the other way. This covers the basics of TSN shuttle operations. Hopefully this information is helpful to you on your shuttle missions. Remember, it is always okay to ask questions and I'm sure any TSN officers will be happy to help you. I've been Lieutenant Junior Tetra and I wish you all good flying.